Tonight's broadcast is a job opportunity. Only sinners need to apply. The text today is taken from uh, Mark chapter 2, verse 17, 13 through 17. Then he went out again by the sea, and the multitude came unto him, and he taught them. And as he passed by, he saw the Levi, the son of <coughs> Ephesus, sitting at the tithe's office. And he said to them, Follow me. So he arose and followed him. Now it happened, as he was dining in Levi's house, that many tithe collectors and sinners also sat together with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eating with the tithe collectors and sinners, they said to his disciples, How is it that he eats and drinks with tithe collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he said unto them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteousness but sinners to repentance. Do you know people who are at, at one time was a zealot? in their life and a sinner for Jesus Christ and then something happened something serious enough occurred in their life that broke their spirit and they to a large degree stopped following our Lord Jesus in fact some of the people that I know not only stopped following our Lord but they become distant to their beliefs and their actions to do in everything and anything possible to fight Christianity does any of these words hit home Levi called Matthew was a disciple of Jesus and the writer of the first gospel. Matthew was originally named Levi. Jesus changed his name to Matthew, which means the gift of Yishanar. He was a native to the Gentiles and engaged in the town of Capernaum as a physician or tithe gatherer for Herod. The name Levi gives the clue that he was a priest or Levite. If you remember back in the book of Numbers, we read that the, this tribe was selected by Sona who say in the, to be his servants on behalf of all the Israelites. They were to work in the temple. Chapter 1 tells us this. But the Levites was numbered, not numbered among them by the fathers. Let's try for the Lord had spoken to Moses, saying, Only the tribe of Levites shall thou not number, nor take a census of them among the children of Israel. But you shall appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of the testimony, over all of its furnishings, and over all that it belongs to. They shall carry the tabernacle and all of its furnishings. They shall attend to it and camp around their tabernacle. And when the tabernacle is to go fo forward, the Levites sh shall take it down. And when the tabernacle is to be set up, the Levites is set it up. The outsider who comes near shall put it put to death. The children of Israel shall pitch their tents. Everyone by his own camp, everyone by his own standard according to the armies. But the Levites shall gather around the tabernacle of the testimony that there may be no wrath of the congregation of the children of Israel, and the Levites shall give charge of the tabernacle of the testimony. Thus the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so they did. So we can denounce that something happened that caused Levite to walk away from the ordained position of serving the every living God. And you talk about the full extreme of walking away. He took on one of the most hated positions of the Jewish pe people, a tithe gatherer. As long as the tithes came in, the Roman government didn't ask questions and how the tithes was raised. As a collector, any rate could be charged so overwhelming was the general rule. Pay the government in the pocket the profit. The tithe collector was the most hated man in the land. Matthew was the only disciple called publican. He collected the money for Herod in Capernaum. It was his job to tax the people and goods crossing the Sea of Galilee or passing along the great Damascus Road which ran by the shore. If a Jew could scarcely persuade himself 
that it was right to pay taxes, how much more hindrance a crime must it have been before the eyes for his eyes to collect them. If a publican was hated, how still more intense must it have been the disgust entertainment against the position who was also Jewish. Matthew would not have been able to serve as a judge or witness in a court. His old whole family would have been viewed as an outcast and disgrace. The Jews had a proverb, take not a wife out of the family with a position for they are all positions. If I have learned anything in life that our Lord Jesus Christ never wastes anything, even if we rebel like Matthew, he can tr he can use whoever, whatsoever he wants, we do to learn in that experience. You see, our Lord knew about Matthew's rebellion, yet in his love, he would utilize the gifts that Matthew had to write this first gospel. His business as a tax collector is custom to him to keeping records. Therefore, his writing skills would be utilized by our precious Holy Spirit to pen the words and actions of our Master, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Matthew stresses that our Lord Jesus is a fulfillment of the Israelites' hope for a deliverer, the Messiah, the one who brings salvation and the perfecting of the Jewish law. Before we took a look at today's scripture, it is beneficial to look at the two other reports that are listed in Matthew's own version as Luke's description of the event. Matthew 9 As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, Follow me. So he arose and followed him. Now it happened as Jesus sat at the table of the house, and behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the first he saw it, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat? with tax collectors and sinners. When Jesus heard that, he said to them, Those who are well, are well have no need of physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what that means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I, I did not come to call the righteousness but sinners to repentance. Luke 5, 32 After these things he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting, at the tax office, and he said unto him, Follow me. So he left and rose, he rose up and followed him. Then Levi gave a great feast in his house, and there was a great number of tax collectors and others who sat down with him. And the scribes and Pharisees complained against his disciples, saying, Why do he eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered and said unto them, Those who are well, no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. That's what he come to do tonight. Those were three accounts. It looks, it looks as if all three accounts are in harmony. Our Lord Jesus came, first came and asked to, or directed Levi to give up his possession, for, profession for the sake of being a disciple. He responds to the Lord's invitation and walks away from his job. He then sets up a last supper with his co-workers and friends to introduce them to the one that he is going to commit his life to. So now let's look at today's scripture. He then went out by the sea, and the multitude came to him, and he taught, and he passed by. And he saw Levite's son, son of a Alphasus, sitting at the tithes office, and he said, Follow me. So he arose and followed me. Do you remember the little guy by the name of Zacharias? Zacharias. He was the one who would have made the deal with the Roman authorities to collect the taxes. Levi was a conductor who was hired by someone like this guy to do the actual collecting of the money. There was possibly a couple of other publications sitting with Levi along the Roman soldiers to protect them and enforce their decisions. By selecting Levi, our Lord Jesus wanted to show that repentance and forgiveness was open to even the lowest of society.